Super Mario Galaxy 2 is one of the greatest video game sequels of all time. It seamlessly took everything from its predecessor and streamlined it to perfection, along with improving just about every aspect of what made the original so great. And the craziest part about all this is that Mario Galaxy 2 wasn't even supposed to be its own game, rather, an expansion of the first title that would be known as Super Mario Galaxy More. However, due to the overwhelming amount of ideas the team had, Shigeru Miyamoto ended up greenlighting a sequel, which would allow the developers to pursue whatever crazy new innovations they could think of. These brilliant ideas all culminated into an experience with so much replay value and enjoyment that you'll almost certainly feel the urge to boot this game back up again not too long after completing it. So let's dive in to see what shaped Super Mario Galaxy 2 into perhaps the greatest sequel of all time. So upon starting a new save file, it's immediately made clear that unlike its predecessor, Mario Galaxy 2 doesn't have much of a story focus as seen with the nearly identical plotline to last time. The only main difference this time around is that Bowser is gigantic, which doesn't really add much to the story. This however was a reasonable sacrifice, as the lack of a real story meant the developers could put most of their time and effort into the gameplay itself. This is seen within multiple aspects of the game, but the earliest example of this is Starship Mario, which is the hub world this time around. Unlike the Comet Observatory where you had to travel to each dome in order to select a galaxy, now all you need to do is step on the main control panel, which takes you into a world map with each galaxy laid out on a linear path. Starship Mario is also much smaller and it houses much less things to do than the Common Observatory. Obviously the main objective when constructing Mario Galaxy 2 was to get the players into action as soon as possible, and while some may dislike this decision, I love the choice to deviate from the original game's path, as it helps set apart the two entries from one another and makes them each feel like their own separate games, rather than expansions of one another. The first Galaxy game produced a better atmosphere with the Common Observatory, as the calming music mixed with the night sky and neon lights created a feeling which no other Mario game ever had before. However, Starship Mario still manages to feel like a cozy home base, and it too also plays a very memorable and fitting tune more befitting of the bright skies. That's another major area where Mario Galaxy 2 feels different from its predecessor. The first game contained almost nothing but melancholic, starry nights which produced an incredible atmosphere and felt extremely deep especially for a Mario game. On the contrary, Super Mario Galaxy 2 boasts almost nothing but bright cloudy days, which is a drastic shift in tone from the previous game. Another noticeable difference is the change in music. While both of these games contain some of the greatest soundtracks to ever grace video games, the first title aims to go for a more serious and saddening tone with its choice of music. Meanwhile, Galaxy 2's soundtrack feels much more happy-go-lucky and uplifting. Both of these work perfectly, however, and your preference honestly may just shift with whatever mood you're in. As I know, I personally don't prefer any of these entries over the other, and it really just depends on what mood I wake up in that day, which dictates my preferred Galaxy game. These two titles go hand in hand with one another and really help to diversify the entire Mario franchise. The biggest improvement Mario Galaxy 2 has over the first game is its level design. While the levels were great previously, a lot of them did feel sorta of slow to play through, and in some cases they could just be downright tedious. In Galaxy 2, the stages are much more tightly designed, snappier, and in turn, engaging. I had fewer problems with the galaxies in this game than I did with the previous entry, but that's one of the best parts about the sequels. By the time the second game in a series is put into production, the developers usually know exactly what areas went wrong with the first game, and therefore they strive to fix every problem in order to create an even better experience with the sequel. That is precisely what happened in this case, as I firmly believe Super Mario Galaxy 2 has some of the greatest level design out of any platformer ever. There really are no bad moments throughout this game's entirety, at least as far as the levels themselves go. Many of the more egregious aspects of the first Galaxy game are also improved here, with the most notable example coming from the prankster comments. These no longer randomly show up in a galaxy out of nowhere. This time around, you need to collect comet medals hidden throughout each and every level in the game. Only upon doing this will you have the option to unlock the Prankster Comet for that particular level. This was a great addition to the game, as it adds another layer of challenge to the experience which wasn't present in the first entry. These Comet Medals are also never hard to find, rather actually collecting them is where the difficulty normally lies. This was a smart move by Nintendo, as if they had chosen to hide the medals in more obscure places, it would have severely halted the flow of the gameplay, thus destroying the very concept of Mario Galaxy 2, that being the fast-paced level design. So opting to make them harder to actually collect adds to the overall difficulty without making things tedious in any way. The prankster comments are also much better designed now, as many of the ones that appeared in the first game have been altered in such a way to be much quicker and in turn more enjoyable to play through. This time it's not as simple as only containing the speedy comments, purple coin comments, cosmic comments, daredevil comments, etc. 
These do reappear, however, the way they were all implemented is far better than they were previously, and rather than making the game feel repetitive and monotonous, it actually spices the game up in a genius way. For example, the purple coin comments now usually include some sort of challenge personalized to the specific galaxy they appear in, rather than just requiring you to run around the stage looking for 100 purple coins. One memorable location this was used in is the Flipsville Galaxy, where it takes the concept of using the spin drill to dig through a gravity-based contraption under the gun of a strict time limit. If you aren't smart and rush into things, here you will most likely fail every time. But if you're patient and precisely calculate every move you take, then you'll absolutely succeed. The speedy comments were another aspect to the original Mario Galaxy that lots of players viewed in a negative light. And I can totally understand this, as previously, the time limits were just far too big to pose any significant challenge, and it could certainly get tedious having to replay multiple levels again and again with almost no changes at all. In Galaxy 2, however, the speedy comments are completely changed and altered to make the experience much more unique than simply playing through the same level with the time limit. Now you're only given a few seconds to complete a stage and must collect these clocks scattered throughout the level in order to complete it. These could actually display quite a challenging mission, as these require you to think fast and strategically as to how you'll go about traversing the stage. The cosmic comments are also gone, with their replacement being these clones of Mario which chase him around the stage and copy his every last move. These are also much more challenging than the previous game's counterpart, as in some levels, the space is so crammed that if you make a single mistake, it could absolutely jeopardize the whole mission. For example, in the Chompworks Galaxy you must guide this golden chomp through the movable platforms until it reaches the end of the path. This is simple enough in the normal star for this mission, but the prankster comment here is brutal, as the clones relentlessly chase you around, multiplying by the second. This star always stood out to me due to its difficulty, and I love it all the more for its challenging nature. But on top of all these wonderfully designed prankster comments, there's also challenges which you receive from the male toad after progressing far enough into the game. Most of these come from the chimp, this funky little guy who challenges Mario to complete one of his courses within a certain amount of time. These are really enjoyable and I liked how in order to pass these challenges, you need to collect enough points by defeating enemies or collecting coins. And just like with the prankster comments, these could also be pretty challenging at times due to the efficiency required of you in order to succeed. Defeating tons of obnoxious enemies under a relatively strict time limit is a tough task and all the more rewarding if you manage to pull it off. Overall, both the challenges and prankster comments bring a respectable amount of difficulty to the experience, and it's always fun to try and blast through these as quickly as possible, or complete them without taking any damage. The power-ups, on the other hand, are quite a mixed bag. Previous power-ups are turns, such as the Bee Mushroom, Boom Mushroom, and Superstar, of course. But one decision I can't get behind is why they decided to bring back the Spring Mushroom of all things. To be fair, the levels which acquire it put the power up to better use in the first game, but it still feels completely unnecessary as most of the time these stages feel like they could easily be completely done without the spring power up, so it ultimately just feels pointless. It was also very disliked in the last entry by most players, so you'd think of all power ups to bring back, it wouldn't be this one. However, for the most part, all the new power ups exclusive to this entry are pretty great. The spin drill is my least favorite of the bunch, but that's mainly due to how restrictive it is to actually use. Other than that, it works great for the levels it's included in, and it's hard to ignore the fact that this is just a super unique and inventive addition to Mario's arsenal. It even houses its own boss battle, which is a fun challenge in its own right, and puts Spin Drill to great use. The Rock Mushroom is another new addition, which greatly enhances the levels it's built around. It's mainly used in the Boulder Bowl Galaxy, where it's introduced. By shaking the Wii Remote, Mario transforms into a giant rolling rock which basically demolishes anything in his path. I've always liked this galaxy because seamlessly rolling over and crushing numerous enemies at a time is one of the most satisfying things to do in the game. However, none of these power-ups can even come close to the level of enjoyment that the Cloud Flower brings to the experience. This is viewed by many as one of the greatest Mario power-ups of all time, and with good reason. Upon collecting this power-up, you're given three cloud platforms to jump on which appear any time you perform a spin attack. If used sparingly, you can completely bypass certain portions of a level, and it feels great to pull off every time. On top of that, Mario also has much more floaty jump which nicely breaks up the gameplay from his usual movement. The last of these new additions is the inclusion of Yoshi, who was oddly absent from the first game. But in any case, his appearance in the sequel is simply amazing, as you can pull off tons of tricks with him, and the levels that he shows up in are made infinitely more enjoyable due to his presence. All the bells and whistles are here too, such as his flutter jump and ability to eat enemies. And like usual, he also acts as a shield for Mario, preventing him from taking any damage upon getting struck by an enemy. 
But his use in this entry goes far beyond these few simple things. Yoshi himself actually brings with him three more power-ups which can only be accessed while using him. The first of these is the Dash Pepper, which sends Yoshi into a speeding frenzy. This is great because it adds a good level of challenge while never being too difficult to control. But on the contrary, his more erratic movement while using the Dash Pepper is put to great use in some of these levels where it requires you to be efficient with his movement if you want to complete the challenge. There's also the Blimp Fruit which blows Yoshi up into a giant floating ball for Mario to ride on. Mechanically this power up works great, but it is very simple with its only real function being to blast Mario upwards through the level. At the very least it's still an oddly entertaining power up as this is literally the only game which it appears in so it feels more novel to use. Lastly there's the Bulb Berry, which lights up invisible platforms allowing you to walk on them. Again, this is very simple but due to how little it's actually used throughout the playthrough, it never becomes a nuisance or a chore to use. Another thing which separates this game from its predecessor is its difficulty. I've touched upon this briefly earlier, but to elaborate further, Super Mario Galaxy 2 contains some of the hardest challenges in the entire 3D series. It feels as though the developers weren't scared to include some pretty daunting challenges as they most likely expected players to have already played through their first Galaxy game. This decision paid off greatly as the difficulty is just perfect, it never feels unfair or too challenging, but when the game does amp up in difficulty, it usually means you'll be spending much more than just a couple minutes trying to complete a particular stage. As mentioned earlier, Mario Galaxy 2 puts all of its focus on the gameplay rather than story elements, so naturally, the levels are much better designed and feature far more brooding missions than previously. Nowhere is this more apparent than with the special world. You unlock this world after completing the main game and defeating Bowser. And this place contains some truly brutal challenges to put it frankly. Most of the difficulty here actually comes from the prankster comments for these levels, as there are quite a few which took me quite a while to complete. The rolling coaster galaxy is centered around the motion controlled ball, which was already frustrating enough in the first galaxy game, but now with the prankster comment you need to collect 100 purple coins under the time limit with very janky controls. This was definitely one of the hardest stars out of both Galaxy games, but this isn't necessarily a good thing in this particular case. I just don't understand why they decided to bring back the motion controlled ball minigame. As much like the Spring Mushroom, this was one of the most disliked aspects of the first title. It doesn't ruin the experience or anything like that, especially considering how little it's used, but I just thought this Galaxy was worth pointing out. Also worth pointing out? Remember the Hungry Loomis from before? Well they return this time around except the way they work is altered a bit. For starters, you can still find Hungry Loomis throughout the many different galaxies, however unlike the first game, they now require coins to feed rather than star bits. This simple change can completely switch up the gameplay and thus your motivations throughout the game because now coins have been given a much greater meaning as you can't fully complete the game without collecting at least enough of these to feed the Hungry Loomas. You can even find Hungry Loomas located on the path of the world map and these ones actually do require star bits so overall, both the coins and star bits are put to better use and the way they go about collecting these items is much more balanced than it ever was in the first game. Another thing Galaxy 2 pulled off better than its predecessor is how it goes about allowing the player to use Luigi. Now upon defeating the final Bowser, we're granted access to Luigi and whenever we want, now we can effortlessly switch between Mario and Luigi, rather than having to 100% the game in order to even use him, much like how it was previously. He still functions as he did before, with his jumps being much longer and higher, as well as him slipping all over the place. But in Galaxy 2, since you're given the option to play with whatever character you want in the post game, there's a higher chance of strategy present which can actually change the results in a drastic way believe it or not. Some levels which require tight and precise movement are much easier to complete if you're playing as Mario, however other levels which may require more height and distance to complete are made much more manageable with Luigi. It's interesting to see how such a small change can result in massively different outcomes. Now as we all know, the music present within both Galaxy games are some of the greatest soundtracks ever composed for a video game. But Mario Galaxy 2 as mentioned earlier is a much brighter and upbeat game overall. And the music reflects this brilliantly as there are much less melancholic tracks and more lighthearted and whimsical tunes. That's not to say there aren't calming and more relaxed themes in Galaxy 2, far from it. Overall it just opts for a more cheery vibe which complements the first game beautifully. Both soundtracks are superb and your preference may very well change based on your mood, but that's what a great soundtrack does. The first Galaxy game exudes a mood of relaxation and melancholy while the sequel boasts for triumphant scores. The developers of Super Mario Galaxy 2 aimed to provide a fresh gaming experience, and this extended to the music. They wanted to offer new musical compositions to complement the new levels, characters, and gameplay elements introduced right here in the sequel. Galaxy 2 also builds upon the foundation of the first game, but also introduces new gameplay mechanics such as the aforementioned addition of Yoshi and the various power-ups. 
The music in the game was designed to suit these new elements and the specific themes of each galaxy. Overall, game developers often want to surprise and delight the players with new experiences, and that includes the music. Using the same music from the first game would have been repetitive and may not even lived up to players' expectations for a fresh and exciting sequel. I do hope one day Nintendo returns to the more bombastic and triumphant feel that both the Galaxy games contained. One area where I feel like the original Galaxy outshined its successor would be within the Bowser fights. In the first game, where they were absolutely fantastic and incredibly unique, running around the planet waiting for him to attack you so you could whack his tail was always such a satisfying feeling, and this feeling was, to a degree, carried over to the sequel. This time around, Bowser rains miniature planets down upon Mario and your goal is to jump on one and ground pound it right into Bowser. The scale of these is nothing short of fantastic as this truly feels like one of the grandest, most exhilarating fights with Bowser out of all the games. Where it falls flat, however, is simply due to the fact that we've already seen something very similar to this in the previous entry, and while things are spiced up a little bit here, it still felt much more special the first time around, so this one here just doesn't exude the same feeling as the first one did. I do like how the final fight in the game includes a fake out after you supposedly defeat Bowser, and his last face looks super cool, however it's extremely easy and you can tell this was definitely not made with challenge in mind, rather a fun and exciting climax to this grand adventure. So if you decide to collect all 120 power stars, completing every challenge and prankster comment in your way, then the green star mission begins, and let me just say, I vastly prefer this post game to the originals, as I feel like it's way more exciting to seek out these green stars, rather than simply unlocking Luigi and having to play through the exact same game again, with little to no changes at all like it was in the first game. And these green stars are no joke, there are 120 of these in total, with 2-3 to three of them spawning per galaxy. This can honestly be a bit overwhelming, and I understand why someone may not want to attempt this. I mean, there's literally no map, no guidance, no nothing. You're completely on your own, and the only way to even remotely tell where these stars are hidden is by listening for the faint twinkling sound they give off. And honestly, adding 120 of these has always seemed like a bit much. I feel as though the experience would have been better if there was only around 50, but for what it's worth, it's still a satisfying feeling to collect all these, and the payout in the end is fantastic, but I'll get to that in a moment. One of the main issues plaguing these green stars is the consistency of them. One moment you might find one directly out in the open, sticking out like a sore thumb, and the next star on the list could be hidden in the most obscure, egregious place possible. This basically means that you have almost no way of getting around using a map if you want to actually progress with this at all. But if you decide to go through with collecting all these stars, then you'll be given the chance to play one of the greatest and hardest Mario levels of all time, Grandmaster Galaxy. Only once you have collected all 240 total power stars in the game are you given the option to play this brutal challenge, and what a final challenge this is. Mario's more restrictive movement in this game makes much of the platforming more challenging, and the developers knew this because the way most of these obstacles are laid out require that you fully understand Mario's moveset, and that you've truly mastered how he controls. The Grandmaster Galaxy truly tests you on everything you've learned up to this point. It even tests you on a few different power-ups here and there just to make sure you know the ins and outs of Super Mario Galaxy 2. But once you finally master this challenge and claim that final power star, you get this feeling which no other Mario game manages to pull off to this degree. The Grandmaster Galaxy truly is a daunting task and puts a great cap on this absolutely wonderful adventure. So in the end, Super Mario Galaxy is simply one of the greatest sequels and one of the greatest platformers ever constructed. It took everything the players knew and loved from the first game and pushed it to 100 with even better design levels, tighter gameplay, and quicker action. Both Galaxy games are truly beautiful experiences and you can't go wrong with playing any of these incredible masterpieces. But that's going to do it for today's video, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I just want to thank you so much if you made it to this point in the video as your support truly does mean the world to me. So that's all for today, I'll see you in the next one.